Bushnell. Performance is the only thing. Savage Arms, better come standard. Federal premium ammunition, surgical precision, terminal results. down here in beautiful California. Our good friends from California have invited us once again. I mean, this is our third trip down here to California to hunt hogs on this gorgeous ranch they have. No, that's right. And I mean, Kent, you've known, you know, the Mark offers for many, many, many years yeah. and, and the whole, you call them the California gang. <laughs> yeah. And I had the pleasure of once being here. The other one was our cameraman, Trent, and I forgot how stunningly beautiful it is. Yeah, they've got a beautiful ranch. It's a, it's a working cattle ranch, but they have the hunting lease for blacktail and, and hog and stuff like that. And they invite us down just about every year, but with our schedules, we just can't make it all the time. But we were lucky enough to, to come this year. So we're gonna get things wrapped up here this morning, go hook up with our boys and go see if we can't find some hogs. And besides, it's February and we're in California. We're look, in at, look at this, isn't this awesome? <laughs> Let's go, bud. You bet. Well, here we are in beautiful California. We're in the Bald Hills. We're going to be going after wild boar. Um, this is a massive, massive ranch, and uh, the wild boar actually even driving on the way in. There's like all kinds of rooting damage, and it is an active cattle ranch. So this is part uh, fun for hunting wild boar, but at the same time, we're doing some range management as well. But we've got the rig all behind us. Uh, it's a spot and stock style. So we're gonna be driving to heights of land, glassing over big opens to see if we can uh, put our eyes in wild boar. And I'm hoping to put some bacon on the ground. So let's get going. a bit of a high land, this is an area that they call Coyote Flats, and we're going to be checking all the hillsides, the little coolies, everything like that. Um, we're a little bit early, but uh, you never know when you can lay eyes on these pigs, so I'm going to get around and do some glassing. Um, yeah, there's some steep hills here in California. <laughs> <laughs> if you could only see Kent, he's holding on for his dear life as well as filming. <laughs> we drove around until we hit the end of legal shooting. We didn't see any wild hogs, but we did spot some black-tailed deer, which was a real treat. It was time to head back to camp and the California crew prepared us an amazing pork chop dinner. Well, it's an absolutely beautiful morning. A little brisk, we actually had to bundle up even as Canadians down here in California, but uh, we're gonna head out and do some more spot and stock hunting here for uh, wild boar. Uh, we had a great evening last night. It was uh, absolutely stunning. Um, this isn't Kent's my first time here. We've come here with uh, Kent's friends a couple times and I just absolutely forgot how stunning this area is. It's just beautiful. It's like a scene right out of Lord of the Rings. But this morning we're hoping to put some eyes on some pigs early and uh, maybe get some bacon on the ground. But uh, I see the boys are loading up here in the, in the Jeep, so I better get going. We uh, drove on a few high ridges and did some glassing. Um, it's quite cool this morning, and so we're thinking the pigs might still be held up. We haven't seen any yet. Uh, we did see some blacktail out, which was really nice and kind of unique for us Canadians. But uh, we're now going to head over to a different area and check out some of the valley bottoms now.
Well, as you can tell, the sun's fully up now. Um, just unfortunately, the pigs aren't fully up right now. We've uh, seen a ton of blacktail. We haven't spotted any uh, uh, wild pigs yet, but uh, lots of sign. No, we've seen rootin', we've seen scat, we've seen wallows. So we know they're in the area, but it's as much as it looks like it's open country, it is not. It, it, there's lots of places these pigs could be hiding. So we're just gonna keep putting along and keep lassing and eventually hopefully we'll cut some tracks of some of these California pigs. So what we did is we drove down to the flat that we saw that boar and it kind of drops down into a river. So we're just gonna kind of sneak up here, get a height advantage, maybe catch a moving down below and get a shot at this boar. So let's see how it goes. This segment is brought to you by Safari Club International Canada. First for hunters. had a good game plan but uh, there's so many little ravines going up here that they can slip away on us. Kent and I figured that that boar might have worked his way down to this water but we got down here and there's we can't see where he is at all. So he might have pulled a slip either got here quicker than us and got across or he pulled a slip and ended up going up one of these ravines. Well, that's why they call it pig hunting. I guess we just keep looking. Just driving and we've got three pigs working up the hillside here so we're gonna try getting within range there's a boar in the front How we do her boys and girls <laughs> well we were uh, we just left camp for the afternoon hunt and we came up over the hill and we noticed a whole bunch of fresh rooting and all of a sudden I looked ahead and I could see these pigs working their way up the slope and uh, the boy said the front one the black one's definitely a boar um, I'm not sure how far that poke was I'd say 150 200 yards but anyways he just went down like a rock so California hog down Whew, that's awesome one thing I want to point out, and you see Kent and I use them all over the world, is the Primo shooting sticks. Um, that was a 200 yard shot. There's no way I would have been able to make that on a moving pig freehand. And I really encourage people like, this can be the difference between, you know, putting an animal down and having it get away. Um, Kent and I are a true believer of the, of the Primo shooting sticks for sure. Well, here it is, 2020 California hog. As a matter of fact, just last week, Kent and I attended the Safari Club International Convention in Reno, and we had our good friends uh, pick us up to come out on Rogue River Ranch, do a little bit of hog hunting, and uh, this is our first kind of full day here. And we spotted these ones kind of coming up out of a ditch and made a really nice shot on the one, and this is gonna be, a, this is a perfect eating size pig. It's not too big, it's gonna be nice and tender. And I couldn't be happier. I mean, what a great way to finish off the 2020 uh, Safari Club International Convention to come and shoot some hogs in California. Awesome. Hey 
Congratulations to Dean. He got himself a really nice hog, perfect shot. I mean, he just anchored that pig right where he was standing. So um, we're just heading out of that same draw where, where Dean got his hog and going up a steep bank, as you can tell. <laughs> And I'm gonna check out some more country. I'm behind the gun now, Dean's behind the camera. The hunt continues, it's beautiful here in California. It's hard to believe it's February and minus 20 at home, but just loving this. Big and open as this country looks. I mean, there are so many crevices and little canyons and little draws and ridges that these pigs can hide in. And you can glass and glass and glass and not see anything and go ahead, drive ahead about 100 yards and all of a sudden there's some pigs. So it's, it's a real fun game to play. Taxidermy services provided by Hunters Union and Ray Wien's Taxidermy. And thanks to these other fine sponsors. There's a gravesite on this ranch that dates back to 1887. One of the old homesteaders in this area. Probably came over for the gold rush. It's pretty cool. Kent, I have to admit, it's kind of nice to get out of the Jeep and take a break. We're up on a beautiful, beautiful headland, and boy, look at this view. I know, the diversity of habitat they have here in the bald hills of California is, is, I mean, second to none, I think. No, for sure, and you know what, one of the things people may or may not know, uh, when I worked at Silvatech Consulting Group, we did a lot of things called habitat modeling, yeah. and um, it's kind of a, a more modern age thing. Um, it's taking a whole bunch of data sets and using it to fit certain criteria for certain species. Yeah, and I think that's a perfect topic for conservation connection. In order to manage species or communities of species, it's important to understand uh, where or what the individual species need for, for habitat. When Dean and I first started our biology careers, most of the data was collected in the field, hands-on. Now, with the improvement of technologies and computers, GIS and cumulative effects analysis, a lot of the uh, management modeling is done in-house with computers and it has really advanced the studies. So one way that we can accomplish this is through wildlife habitat modeling. So there's a variety of research and scientific techniques to determine what makes good habitat uh, for, for a species, but um, most of them involve some sort of spatial component. Now when I mean spatial, I, I mean we can put it on a map, we can identify where it is, and in most cases that involves some sort of geographic information system, or GIS. So some of the key steps that we have to use to identify where the animal is moving or what they need for habitat, uh, we need to identify the biologically relevant variables. So what are the factors that, that drive this species? What are the, the attributes of the environment that it's selecting for? The other thing we want to do is we want to be able to identify spatial layers that are available. So it, it would be great if we had all the information in a map base, but we don't. In the past, basically a lot of the ministry systems or government systems worked in silos, but they all collected data. You had hydrological data being collected, geological data being collected, forestry was, you know, collecting plants and, and cover type information. And so literally for like 40, 50 years, massive data sets were formed by all of these ministries. After we have our variables and we have our, our layers, then we're able to kind of build a statistical model to kind of make predictions as to where the animal will be found or most used. And uh, once we kind of project that results onto the map, then we can start to evaluate that with supplemental data. And the great thing about it too is you can also modify numbers to see the effects of things like cumul uh, cumulative effects. Uh, you can look at climate change and everything like that. Now, all this modeling, it can help us plan for developing conservation areas or developing where parks and protected areas should be. Uh, it can help us protect or conserve biodiversity. 
and it can also help us determine species management plans. So there is limitations when it comes to habitat modeling that you have to take into consideration. First of all, the age of your data sets. And the other thing is you can't just 100% rely on habitat modeling as being truthful. So you still have to have a field component, which we call ground truthing, which is to go out and test the models and make sure that they are displaying accurate data. Well, we got to the top of the ridge here and from back there we could see some black dots and once we got to the top here we confirmed there's about seven or eight hogs down in a in a low spot between some knobs we're just going to figure out how we're going to get over there and see if we can't get uh, get a shot at one of these big pigs okay now before we head off to go after these hogs and get up close on them there's one thing i wanted to point out California had implemented a lead-free hunting for all hunting, whether it's shotgun, rifle, or uh, small caliber. Um, so we have to use full copper bullets here in California. It's something that as sportsmen, we have to be diligent about checking before you go on the hunt. Now let's go after these pigs. This segment is brought to you by King's Camo. See the difference. Now, back to Bushnell's trigger effect. Well, we've got to the height of land here. We can see the pigs down below us. We're gonna have to drop off this edge, sneak around a couple little knobs, and then we should be within the shooting position. Hopefully those hogs will stay there. So the guys are just gonna stay up on the ridge here, keep eyes on them. We're gonna head on down. Okay, we've dropped down off the ridge. We're on a really good cattle trail here. The pigs are behind a little bit of a roll, so they can't see our approach. We should be able to get up on them. They were about 600 and some yards from us at the top of the hill. Well, as we're coming down that trail, uh, Dean's behind the camera. He looks off to the left, and I think we've got a big giant boar off to the uh, main group off to the side here, so we're gonna get to this little knob and see if we can't uh, get up, get a better look at them. He's 280 yards from us. It's gonna be tough to get closer to him. There's more pigs over this hill. We're gonna take a quick peek and look. There might be a boar in that group. Well, there you go, 240 yard shot, one shot. Oh boy, I tell you what, that's awesome. I love this pig hunting in California, here in the Bald Hills. I mean, it's a spot and stock. There was a boar off by himself from the main group. That was pretty cool, one shot. Had to wait for him to turn broadside, put it right in the boiler room. Yes, we did it. Oh, there goes the other pigs right now. <laughs> That was pretty cool. Oh boy. Holy. Awesome. Finally got a Tusker here. Well, I've been coming to this ranch 
for I don't know how many years. I've known these fellas for, well, since the 80s. Uh, and boy, I tell you, they delivered on this hunt. I finally got a, hog, a tusker of a hog. I've shot lots of hogs, but they've all had small tusks. This guy's got some big cutters, beautiful tusks, big mature boar. I couldn't be happier. Rogue River Ranch, my California gang, they pulled this one off. I mean, we've had a spectacular weather, unbelievable scenery, great hosts, great time. And I'm sure Dean and I'll be back again for another, another adventure here at Rogue River, but I couldn't be happier. Another pig, 2020. It's been really good for us. Awesome. This has been a Thunder Boys production.